good afternoon, everybody. This is Jim Shalek, and I'm at the Board of Elections. We're having our September meeting. It's September 21st at 2.30, and I'm at the Board of Elections. I'm going to take attendance because not everybody is on the screen. Uh, Nahid Kozume. Here. David Naiman. Here. Diane Dillon. Present. Elise Barnes. Present. Jackie Phillips. Not present yet. Alan Banoff. Present. Okay, so we have a quorum. We're going to begin because we have a lot of items to discuss. First, just in my remarks, I always like to start out by thanking Margaret and the staff for their tireless efforts uh, in putting together an election that no one, no one has ever seen before. And I know she's going to present her uh, staff recommendation for the canvas today. We're anxious to hear that. And we're also going to talk about our invitation to a briefing by the county council. I believe it's going to be October 21st at 1.30, but Margaret's going to, uh, we're going to confirm that. And also our swearing in of the Board of Canvassers will be by remote, Kevin says on October 1st at uh, 10 a.m. will be sworn in by the uh, county clerk. Um, I don't believe there's any additions or changes to the agenda, but as we discuss the election, you know, any related topic certainly is welcome to be discussed. Okay, disclosure of campaign contributions. Before I go around the room, uh, I know Kevin looked into the issue of the requirement to report when a member goes to a central committee or political party event and whether that had to be disclosed. And Kevin, can you just give us uh, an update on, on what your finding is and what your recommendation is? Yes. I, I went back and I listened to the September 19 meeting and uh, the discussion of the board and it seemed pretty clear to me that the intent of the board in terms of approving the bylaws was that if you attended a fundraiser uh, that was for a particular candidate or a question that would appear on the ballot, where the board would be serving as a board of canvassers, there was an obligation to disclose that. However, if it was just a contribution to the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, or basically an event that would be used for not specifically for a candidate or a question, that that did not need to be disclosed. Thanks for that, Kevin. All right. Uh, in terms of uh, Kevin's remarks, uh, is there any, any member that has to disclose a campaign contribution per our bylaws? Hearing none, we have no disclosures to report today. Lisa, do we have anybody uh, signed up for a public comment? No one has addressed um, me specifically, so I don't know if anyone's online. Okay. Like well, uh, is there anybody online that hasn't signed up but would like to uh, make a public comment or address the board? Um, I guess I would qualify as that. I'm happy to do it when it looks convenient, Jim. It's, it's, it, this will be the right time. Is this Senator Cheryl Kagan? Yes. Welcome, Cheryl. Thank you so much, Jim. Really appreciate it. Um, for the record, Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the senator for District 17, Rockville Gaithersburg. Um, I'm, uh, I just want to pipe in with two questions for your consideration. One is easier to talk about than the other, so I'll start with the easier one. Um, as I talked to some of you about or written about, um, the question of public canvassing, so that there is transparency and the movement of ballots in the early voting or drop-off boxes to the Board of Elections, making sure that that's being done with bipartisan teams and security. And second, the whole public canvassing to make sure that there's the ability to observe, whether it's press or a candidate or something. Um, during the June primary, I was pretty disappointed about that virtually everywhere, and I understand that it is a nearly impossible task, but I'm kind of proud of all the great work that Montgomery County did and hoping that we can be at the forefront and make sure to do it better than was done in June. 
So that's the first two, and I can pause if there are questions or needed clarifications or response on that one. Well, I know, I know Margaret's going to touch on those topics during her uh, Canvas report. Uh, are okay. You, are you going to be with right. us? So then let me shift to the second, the second question, the second issue, if I could, Jim. Sure. Um, an issue came up on the State Board of Elections that I think they talked about but then didn't resolve, and, and I am worried about this. It is going to be an issue that is most acute, in my opinion, in Montgomery County. We know that the number of Internet-delivered ballots is extraordinary, and the numbers are certainly going to increase in the coming weeks. We have just under a month now, uh, one day less than a month, for people to request their, their ballots, and I think as we get closer to October 20th, then the percentage of online delivered ballots with people being concerned about the post office is going to start the office. The question is, what happens when someone gets an online delivered ballot? which we know we don't want people to do, but their, their spouse, their roommate, says, oh, crud, I forgot to get mine. <clears throat> and the person says, well, that's no problem. I'll just make a photocopy, and then you can vote uh, separately and send it in separately. There would be two ballots under one tracking code. So the question is, what happens when that comes in? Is it going to be secure? It certainly is not in both, because you have no idea who that second person is. They haven't officially requested a ballot. So it's their curing. Which ballot would you throw out? How would you know which one was the, came from the requester? Would you have to throw out both? And I'm just wondering whether the county board is going to take up that issue. I have also uh, reached out to the state board. Um, it's unclear whether they're... Um, whether they're going to be able to take that up in time. So I just, um, I know that the campus is going to start really soon uh, after the ballots uh, get received and start with things turned. So I want to turn out for your consideration. Again, uh, super time. Thank you to all of you for your service. Thank you to the incredible staff. I'm happy to take any questions. Margaret, are, are, are the senator's questions going to be incorporated in your report? Uh, Allison McLaughlin, um, you got a question similar to this? Do you want to? Yeah, you want me to go ahead and speak please. to that one now or later please. as part of your report? No, answer it now, please. Okay. Yeah, yeah thanks. So. This is um, Allison McLaughlin, the deputy this will director. Help the, um, when a voter requests a delivery ballot, they're given instructions to put certain information on the envelope. And one of the things that they are instructed to put on the envelope is about a tracking number that is unique to that request. So the first question when we, when we deal with a situation like you're describing, we have a voter who photocopies their ballot, the ballot, neighbor's ballot, and sends it back into us, is whether they wrote an identical ballot tracking number to the other person or whether they wrote perhaps nothing at all. So in both of those cases, that is something that our staff would, they would flag, they would set it aside. The first step when they're taking receipt of that ballot is to look up that ballot tracking number. And if that ballot tracking number is going to correspond to a request, assuming it corresponds to a request, and it is the first and only one we've received back with that ballot tracking number, then that's going to proceed through the process to the can. If they get a second one, then they're going to flag that and they're going to say, oh, we already have a ballot in the system with that ballot tracking number. And so then we look up where that ballot would be in the process. And if it's already been counted, it's already been counted. If it has not already been counted, then it's going to be pulled back and a comparison will be done to see if that was if it's the same voter and they just chose to do it a second time or whether it was perhaps a different voter. Um, and so based on sort of the, the facts in front of the staff or if there's a question that needs to be referred to the board, then that will be, that'll be researched and dealt with accordingly. The, um, I think the biggest situation that you're pointing to here is if you have somebody who, you know, go ahead and make, they write their name, they sign their oath in their own name, but they never made a request. So that is a situation where when that gets flagged by the staff and we take a look at it, we look to see if the voter requested a ballot. If the voter did not request a ballot, then that is our category. But it is a category that we would need to cure by election day. So it's one that we need to we need to get in touch with that voter as quickly as we can. 
try to get a request on file for them by election day because if we don't get a ballot request from them by election day, then we're not going to be able to count that ballot. May I ask a follow-up yes, question? Yeah, hey, David, just a second. Jackie's still Oh, Jackie's on the line. Welcome, Jackie. Excellent. Uh, a a follow-up question. Uh, Allison, it sounded like the saying is, is that the first ballot to arrive would be counted, and I'm wondering if there's something that can be done to make sure that when we get those requests that they match the names, because um, otherwise, in the, in the example that Senator Kagan gave, if the person who duplicated the ballot manages to get theirs open first, and they, they might be mailing at the same time and they might not be, um, but if they manage to get theirs open first, the one who actually requested the ballot could be the second one, and then, um, you know, we don't want to be in a situation where the first one got counted in, incorrectly. Sorry, I just have a distraction here. Um, thank you. Yeah, that, I mean, that is a, uh, sorry, I'm struggling to pay attention to things at once. Um, in other words, it's a slow day for you then, right? Tell me two things. <laughs> Normally, that um, five. You, know, you will, it's all about the information that's written on the outside of the envelope and how much information is there, um, you know, and then when you take a look at that, oh, I, you know, I think, Depending on the level of detail you, you know, want to go into here, you know, we don't do signature verification. So, you know, it kind of depends how clearly what is written there, how easy of a time we're going to have presenting that or, you know, untangling that situation, how rapidly we're going to be able to catch that before the ballot potentially gets canvassed. Um, you know, or of course, no matter what, we'll then be looking at once we've received two, and we pass the ballot already been canvassed. If it hasn't been, you know, we obviously have a full opportunity to look at all the evidence on those two different ballots. Um, you know, if the ballot has been canvassed, you know, I can't necessarily speak to the hypothetical because it all just depends on how much information is written there and how easily scrutinized it was. Well, it's, it's part of the review process. I realize we don't match signature to signature, but do we match signature to name? Yeah, there you go. Kevin, do you want to? Yes, we do. Do you want to go ahead and jump in here on this one on the legal standard? Well, I mean, the person should have printed their name, so you should be able to read the printed version of it. And obviously, we would look at the signature to the extent the signature is legible as to what the name is. But sometimes all, all I'm asking is can we match the name to the name on the request? Because right. In other words, wouldn't wouldn't the tracking number be attached to the request which can't come in anonymously, which agrees with the name? Mr. President, this is Margaret Jurgensen. Margaret, yeah. Uh, Wait, Margaret's on. David uh, and members of the board. Each batch, um, whether it's fifty or a hundred. Um, the individual that is um, scanning that document in needs to look and make sure that the name matches what is, is appearing before you on the MD voters. So if it's Margaret A. Jurgensen, and Margaret wasn't smart enough to print in her name, then they are going to look and see if Margaret Jurgensen does a with her signature a try to appear. Um, there are instances when it's difficult to tell and so we would bring in one of the supervisors to assist that person or that ballot might be set aside for further review and ultimately if we can't review it at all, uh, if there's a question, it would be brought to the full canvas board. So yes, it is correct, we do not have a signature verification but each batch consists of a list of names that are within that batch and that we should have at least initially associate 100 names to 100 envelopes that are in that batch that are then gone, then we give it to the Canvas member or the Canvas team and they, they have to count how many, however many envelopes, in this case it's probably 100, 
And if they're off, and I think you've seen this, all of you, the Canvas board members, where if you're off by one, then you have to put them in the same order as the batch to de determine if something's missing. So there is a process of verification. Okay, I, can I, so <laughs> David, I think what David and I are asking is not necessarily signature verification, but whether the number is unique to a name that requests that ballot, and then that would link the two. Yes, the batch I, I, I the think what Margaret just number, said about MD voters. Yes, the batch the, the number. Match of the name um, the, with, with the request number. Did, did I understand that correctly, Margaret? Pretty close, yeah. The voter name is attached to the voter record, which then has to be attached to the absent, the vote by mail request. So yes, all three must link. You are correct, David. Thank you. So, um, just in closing then, based on the comments that I heard from all of you, could I request or suggest, Mr. Chairman, that you guys put something, maybe Kevin draft something, but that we have something in writing that will sort of validate and verify this process so in case there's a legal challenge or a political challenge or a press story that the board has protected itself saying, this is what we came up with, this is what we voted on, this is the consistent practice in Montgomery County. And maybe rather than Montgomery County needing to go to the state to ask for guidance, maybe we can offer you guidance to the state and we can roll it out in 24 jurisdictions. That's a good suggestion. Kevin, can you do that? I can. No, thank you. That's a good suggestion. We will. We will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, right. Senator. I'm going to mute myself. Thank you all. I'm going to be listening to the rest of it. Thank you. you. And we'll cover, Marvin, you're going to cover the Senator's other questions in your in the, in the report. Okay. Uh, any other public comments or, or anyone on the line that, that wanted to address the board? Okay. Can I ask a question? I can't get myself to do like I've always been able to. Can somebody tell me how, because there's a chattering going on that's making it really hard for me to hear if we could all mute, but I'm happy with my... Um, I, uh, and, and I'm getting an icon to mute. Help! Lisa, Janet, we what do you I can mute her, but she can... She got to unmute herself. Oh, Janet, can you repeat that? Yeah, she's I've not, muted she's her. Now, Lisa, oh, now, Lisa now. has muted you, Diane. She's got to know how to unmute herself if she wants to talk. So if I'm you have to, if you, when I'm you mute. talk, Diane, you have to she's, unmute yourself. Did you see she's simple? I'm, I'm trying to get there. No, I, I, I think she's trying to unmute herself and it's not working. What's the mute? Star six? No, no. On the iPad, it would be something too. Um, I'm also hearing that there's maybe a, a bunch of background noise on the phone, so I don't know whether people on the phone need to mute themselves. That may, be, that may be part of what we're hearing. I'm hearing a lot of background noise. Um, when I'm muted. Me too. Me too. I can't even unmute her anymore. The mute and is a little Diane, microphone, right, Lisa? She has, she has to unmute herself. She, she doesn't. It's on the screen. She has just to touch the, the screen. screen. Diane, touch the screen, and you should see a microphone on your screen when you tap your screen. On the bottom of your screen, you should see a microphone. I'm going to turn yours. Does the make an attendee button do it? No, you can't do it. No, you, you see this one there? You have to go to the page. No. See, the bottom is the sign. See here? Good. Unmute. Do you want to turn it on? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Diane, you're good to go? No, she's still muted. Still muted. If you have a problem, you can Perfect. log in. Perhaps. Yeah, tell her to log out. Then it can call her. Diane, Perhaps. leave the meeting and come back to the meeting. End the meeting and come back in. Hang up and call back in.
All right, she was doing that. Okay. I believe Barbara Sanders uh, has oh, a question. Oh, hello, Barbara Sanders has her hand up in the inside. I got what? that. Barbara, Barbara Sanders? Sanders, if you want to acknowledge Barbara Sanders. Yeah, hey, Barbara, yes. Barbara? What happened? Privacy statement. I went off too. She's, sh she's sharing this? Someone else is sharing this? Somebody's sharing that. Oh. Who's sharing that with us? Can we? I, I just came back in. What is going on? No, there's a Microsoft pr privacy how statement. Do I, how do I kick this out? I, I Has anybody shared that with us? It came off when I came on. Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. Maybe you hit a button that shares your screen, Diane? Diane? Diane. It's the, oh, button. It's the button next to the new button that shares your screen, I believe. All I see are David and, oh my God, I apologize, but this is really maddening. Do you want me to go out again? Yes. Yes, please. Diane, what are you talking about? This Microsoft. Diane, it's an it's arrow in the box. It's not her. I, I, I suspect that it's not Diane who did it because it looks like it's it's um, it's Barbara Sanders who is sharing her screen yeah, on my on my screen. It's Barbara on Zoom or on Teams. Do you all have that Microsoft Barbara, you, privacy? Barbara, if you can hear us, you, you are sharing your screen and probably don't need to be. Barbara Sanders sharing her screen. Barbara Sanders, I'm going to remove you from the meeting. Please call back. Now I see okay. everybody. Okay. But Barbara, I'm, I'm told Barbara had a question or a comment. She had her hand raised, and I don't know if that was part of what she shared. All right, when she comes back on, you know, we'll... we'll okay. Has anyone else that had a comment or a uh, statement to the board? Okay, we'll get... When Barbara comes back, we'll get her back on. Uh, Margaret, your election director status report? Yes. Um, right now, um, I would like the board to hold the date October 1, 2020 for a county council briefing at 1.30. I shared the letter that was sent to Jim. It was part of the advance packet. We have not received a confirmation of that date. And in, prop in the process of preparation, uh, I have assigned Allison and Huberto to assist Jim and David and any other board member that um, would like to be briefed on the uh, preparations for the county council. Uh, we have, as soon as we receive the questions that they are requesting, we will uh, begin to develop answers for you and um, you can go forward from there. So just as a whole date, um, Allison checked right before the meeting to see if it's been firmed up. It has not, but as soon as we get the packet from the council uh, or staff sends us questions, we will share that with the board members. That's a Zoom meeting too. Margaret, may I ask a question about that? Pardon? Um, you, I'd like to ask a question. Sure. You, you indicated that you were um, offering us to be briefed up for that, which I think would be excellent. Um, are you also planning? Wow, he just went out. David, could you repeat that, please? Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'll, 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 uh, I'll repeat it. I, I appreciate the offer to brief up the board members, which I think would be very helpful before that briefing. My question is, are you planning to attend with us? I believe so, unless some, okay. some sort of other exceptional action happens here. All right, under, un understood. I think that's very important. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Mr. President, uh, for purposes of this meeting, we do have someone new helping uh, Lisa take uh, notes. So if you have a question in the process, it would be really helpful for this new person uh, who, uh, to state your name. So for the record, my name is Margaret Jurgensen. I'm the election director. And I'd first like to introduce our new voter services manager, Boris Brokhan. Brakovich. Brakovich. So, uh, do you want to step forward so we can see you? So the board members can see you? You'll have to come over here. Welcome, Boris. Welcome, Boris. 
This is Thank Boris. You. Good to have you on board. Boris, well, pleasure meeting you all. Uh, Boris is, uh, has lots of experience with elections. He did work with us during the primary, and um, we're looking forward to uh, breaking him in on this election, <laughs> <Yeah>. big time. <laughs> so, and he's a good sport about it. Okay. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I can't do for Boris. Yeah, we approximately another 101 individuals have come from other county departments, have been detailed to the Board of Elections to assist here. 22 are from the Recreation, CUF, and HHS staff. We have six, nine contractors and 70 employees, and today I believe another 15 started. Mm -hmm. um, the IT staff has started the logic and accuracy testing. They're still doing the pre-prep, but they will begin at full force beginning tomorrow. Um, in order for the board, uh, for the staff to do that, I do need a motion from the board to order the Board of Elections director and staff to begin the process for logic and accuracy. And the staff is recommending that October 19th should be the date for the public demonstration. So, Mr. President, may I have that motion? I move. Uh, who ma uh, Nahid I made that motion? Is there a second? Nahid. Second? Second. Who was that? Jackie. Jackie. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Any, no one opposed. All right. So, um, the next item is the budget. Kara? Do you have something to add to this discussion? I believe you received the budget um, spreadsheet in the advance packet. We did. Are there any questions? Okay, going on then. Voter registration, I did send the monthly statistics out with the advance packet or maybe Friday's packet. Uh, uh, we, this tomorrow is National Voter Registration Day, and so while there are not going to be the types of public events that we have participated in the past, we do expect to see an uptick in the number of individuals checking to see that they're properly registered as well as registering to vote. There are a lot of national efforts tied to this event this, this whole week. Um, and so I would, I just want you to be aware of that. Um, if there's no questions with regards to the monthly statistics, going on to the State Board of Elections, the State Board sent out the military and overseas ballots uh, beginning on September 18th. They announced that um, at the September 17th that the vote by mail ballots, where there's a new vendor, I'm sure you've all saw the news media, Everything that was uh, entered into the system by September 3rd and September 18th by 8 o'clock was included in the batch <coughs> that's to be mailed by the vendor between September 25th and 28th. The vendor is taking the ballots and trucking them from their plant in Minnesota to Maryland where they will enter the U.S. Postal Stream uh, either through the, ba the Baltimore uh, district or the capital district which is where we are with Prince George's County. We believe this will improve our delivery time for the ballots for the voters and then after that the state board will uh, do a poll every evening beginning September 28th at 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday to mail all of the applications to vote by mail. Today also the State Board opened the data center to support the local boards with processing voter registrations as well as vote by mail. It'll be as, as it is with any new process, we expect kind of a slow ramp up. The uh, state employees that are doing this are coming from other agencies, they'll have to learn the MD voter system um, and then hopefully um, they'll start picking up speed and be a real benefit beginning next week. 
then uh, the state board is going to be mailing uh, application to all of the voters that have either registered to vote for the first time or updated their registration with an address change, name change, whatever type of change. Um, and this mailing will be done by Runback uh, so that everyone has an opportunity to receive the vote by mail application. Another mailing that the state is required to do by law is to um, send a mailing offering an opportunity to register to vote to those individuals who are declined or opted out through the MVA system and that mailing will occur sometime before the end of the month. Also, um, the mm -hmm. local boards will expect Bobby, several surges over the next week mm -hmm. because of these activities by the state board and of course national events. So that's what we have with the state board. Are there any questions with regards to any of those um, state board operations? Okay, that being the case, the board attorney report. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask you, is Barbara Sanders back on? She's on. Barbara? No, she's not back on. She's on. It says right here, Barbara Sanders. Well, Barbara, we have you on the meeting, but we don't hear you. Can she, you she can text something if she has a question, and we can acknowledge okay. her. We'll try and get back to that. Kevin, board attorney report? Sure. Uh, Barbara Nickel Johns confirmed that uh, you'll, you'll all be sworn in at 10 o'clock on October 1. Unlike the primary, it will be done virtually because the Attorney General's office has determined that the swearing in of the Board of Canvassers can occur virtually because you all have already been sworn in in person as the Board of Elections. So that's why they've, they've changed their position on that issue. Uh, We've been working on MOUs with these drop boxes. We have MOUs with the Board of Education, Tacoma Park, Friendship Heights, uh, and Montgomery County, and we are finalizing the early voting agreements with Gaithersburg, uh, Montgomery County, and the fire company. So we should have those done by the end of this week, and uh, those should be finalized. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin? Yes. Alan? Kevin, the, the square again will be on Teams. Yeah, she should have gotten an invitation this morning. Yeah. It, I, I did. It's confirming Teams, yes. right? Teams, correct. That was yeah, Alan. Margaret? Yes. This is Elise Barnes. Mm hmm. I'm sorry, I was having trouble uh, unmuting. We can hear you. Uh, a quick question for you. She needs to speak up, though. Can you hear me? Can you speak yeah, up, Elise? Can you we speak can hear you. up just a little? Yes, yes, I will. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, we received an a email from Marianne Keith, oh, Keith, Marianne Keith on, on the 14th of September. Um, I did not respond. Was there any response to her from you? Well, yeah, I did talk to Marianne uh, to address some of her issues. Uh, I'm going to cover most of those issues in this meeting. Uh, she, I believe, she uh, wanted the website changed. They're actually working on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, and she wanted well, something about the drop boxes, and uh, we mother, had planned on putting people know. there. I'm sorry. I'm going to cover that at a different. Uh, at, um, are you going to cover uh, uh, what you uh, said to her in another part of this meeting? Yes, I am. I'm going to cover it as part of the election preparations. Okay. All okay. right. Uh, is it possible for us to get a copy of your response? Sure. No problem. I'm, I, if it's by if it's by email, I'm, I'm assuming, or unless it was by phone, of course, it's not possible for us to get a phone call. But if there was a email response of some sort, I'd appreciate a copy. Okay, yeah, I will forward you a copy of what I sent Marianne. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Uh, the first 
also after this is the uh, canvas plan so um, the the board's rep sorry the staff recommendation for the canvas they did send out a document uh, to the board members that um, we would move the canvas to Plumgar Community Rec Center this uh, site it would be used exclusively by the board it is a mile and a half north of our office literally straight up the hill um, the public would be permitted on site with social distancing enforced we believe that 10 persons would be permitted in the canvas area with the mask requirements for all county facilities there's also there's seating available the gym seats as well as there's a space for wheelchair uh, individuals there's adequate parking with a parking lot and then of course street parking the ballots would be taken by Plumgar for canvassing and returned to the Montgomery County Board of Elections later for scanning and tabulating they would be sent up via box truck in secured cages the public will not be permitted to observe the scanning and tabulation in person <clears throat> but would be live streamed using the same method that we used in the primary election we do have four cameras that we can affix so that they can observe all four scanners we do have four scanners functioning right four scanners those, those cameras? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And then, um, so we're recommending for the actual canvas judge, election judge members to um, meet on October 6th and would begin at 10 a.m. until the end, October 10th, October 13th, October 15th, October 17th, October 20th, October 23rd and potentially October 24th beginning November 5th and then again on November 7th and the balance of the schedule would be determined based on how much has come in and how much is still coming in we further recommend that initially obviously the board has to meet the first day October 6th at 10 a.m. to convene the board of canvassers and then um, we would recommend that the board meet on October 13th at 3 p.m., October 20th on 3 p.m., and October 27th at 3 p.m. And then the November dates would be determined. The ballots would be received and processed into MD voters. All ballots that are received in the month of October would, of course, be timely ballots with no signature would be escalated to the supervisor in charge of vote by mail to permit the voter opportunity to cure the missing signature just as we did in the primary until November 13th uh, 10 a.m. these ballots would not be admitted into the October canvas to give the voter an opportunity to fix their ballot or to cure their ballot traditional vote by mail ballots these would be bundled uh, by in batches of 100 the canvas member would confirm the number of envelopes is equal to 100 the ballot envelopes would be flipped over in a manner to slide the voted ballot out of the envelope the ballot envelopes would be bundled up by batch collected by the canvas team members and then unfolded in accordance to our requirements the web delivery ballots would also be batched in 100 batches of 100 during the duplication process the canvas member would mark the original ballot as the original they would duplicate it they would then verify it by exchanging they would place the sequence number uh, located in the upper right hand corner public viewing would be permitted but because of the requirements of social distancing 10 persons in the canvas area would is all that would be permitted there would be room for the election judge canvas members to have lunch there's vending machines that are there plus there's several takeout me, um, meal businesses because of co CDC requirements water will have to be supplied and we'll have to work that out with the county on how they want us to proceed with the purchase of water we would have 21 tables at least dedicated to regular vote by mail 
There would be six tables dedicated to duplication. Of course, there would be cages for the incoming uh, vote by mail envelopes. There would be cam cages for the, out the completed open ballots. There would be tables for intake for the staff to work on. Um, cages for the, op the carts. Tables for the electronic envelope openers. We'd have to have tables to hold the gloves, the wipes, the sanitizing spray. Face masks for the canvassers that can't wear a mask or want a face shield. There would be a desk for the canvas lead, which is Michelle Gonda, with tables for her staff and canvas supplies as needed. And of course, she would also have to have a laptop, um, which we have assigned to her to um, be able to link with MD voters. The ballot scanning would occur in the server room here with the high-speed scanner room with live video streaming. Zero reports would be posted in the window of training room three on the lower level. This is the location where the board has traditionally posted the tapes for the ballot. Video streaming is required because the lower level warehouse has multiple activities being performed with ballots in the process of being packed as well as the preparation of the DS200s and the ballot marking devices and all the other election equipment that goes with an election. Allowing the public would compromise the security of the election preparations as well as create a significant safety issue, not only for the public but for the staff. Those black carts with all of those ballots, in each location has 255 precinct ballot styles, are very, very heavy. Additionally, there would be these heavy carts moving back and forth uh, as the staff prepares for early voting in vote center locations. The use of the live streaming will allow anybody to watch the process safely. And that is my recommendation for the canvas. Marvin, and then I've included some pictures. There's some gym seats there. The, um, the gym's gym. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's my recommendation, staff recommendation. Well, I did. I'm sorry. I am available for questions. Yeah. Before the board asks questions, uh, can you just tell us what's the rationale for the staff recommending that the canvas be moved off site? There's just no further space in this building. We training rooms one and two are dedicated to the intake of the voted by mail return ballots. Right now, I believe we have 231,900 that have been processed. We have a backlog of about 53,500 that are going to be processed, plus whatever came in today's mail. So training room one and two is dedicated to just receiving the ballots and putting them in order in batches and whatnot. Then uh, the next training room is uh, being utilized to do uh, processing of applications as well as training room three is also being used to process applications. The voting area that we used to have where people would vote by mail has also been used to open the mail of the vote, vote applications, vote by mail applications so that they can be processed by all the staff. So we just have no further space in this building to have any type of canvas. And then, realistically, we have 115 individuals working here. And if I were to try to bring in 36, 40, 45, 50 people, there's no parking left. I don't know. We'd be, there's just no parking left in this facility. So because the canvas would be going on at the same time as our operation of the election and preparation for the election, we have to go off-site? Yes, you would need to go off-site for the safety of everyone. Alan and David who have a question. Yeah, let me, I just have one more. Uh, and the number, the, limiting the uh, number of persons in the canvas area to 10, how was that number determined? It was based on the social distancing requirements of the state, or uh, of the county. It's six feet, and we, we measured it out. Um, and we were able to determine that um, that 10 people will meet the requirements and uh, so that they can be seated, they're six feet apart. 
plus we have the space for an individual who may or be in a wheelchair or a scooter. Would you place a time limit on how long someone could be in the canvas? In other words, if we let 10 in and they're there all day, we limit others that may want to... Uh, we're certainly open. I mean, the staff has discussed that as a possibility to, you know, do four-hour limitations. Um, if the board wants us to do it, we need to figure out who is going to coordinate that schedule. And the press is allowed in, notwithstanding the limit, or are um, they included in the limit? They would be included in the limit. The limitation doesn't have a, you know, opt out for the media. And the 10 would be first come, first serve? How, how would that work? Um, yeah, it would be first come, first serve. But if the board wishes to direct us to have appointments so that one person doesn't man stay there all day long, um, given the, the staff would be willing to work, work out some type of schedule for those days. Thanks, Mark. This is kind of a... Margaret? This is a new, new thing for us. Well, David, I'm, I'm going to go... I'm going to go... Uh, this is go Diane. On. Okay, this is okay. Diane. Go ahead. You have to go Okay. Yeah, let Diane... Question. Diane? Diane? Diane, can you hear me? Diane? Can, can you, you hear me? We're going to have David and Alan um, address their question first. They had their hand raised. Well, I said something first, but no, no. There's a little icon you can switch on the screen. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it the way the way I do the uh, attendance. So, Nahid, do you have any comments or questions for our director? No. No. Okay, David. Yes, I have a few questions. Thank you, um, Margaret. I believe that. We received this proposal about an hour before this meeting. Um, I'm just curious as to um, why it wasn't made available to the public earlier. Uh, I, trying, earlier. I was trying to finish writing it and adding in the pictures. And it's, on the and it's on the website. And it is on the website. It did go up on the website. Right. Also today, right? I mean, yes, that's, that it, is it, correct. In, 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 in those cases, I mean, we, you know, the idea behind our putting our, our, our meeting materials out in advance, um, the question of whether the public can attend our canvas is obviously of great interest to the public in, in both political parties and probably among um, people who are no political party. Um, and, um, you know, also it's a great interest to us, as you know. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the questions that I have from my very quick review of it today. But, um, like, you know, um, for those of us who have other things we do during, you know, with our time, um, getting it an hour before the meeting is really not enough time for us to, um, to, to, you know, to give it the thought that it deserves. Um, let me start with the duplication process. Um, you've indicated in your document, it says, during the duplication process, the Canvas team member will mark the original ballot with the original stamp. Um, you refer to the Canvas team member, and I thought that traditionally we have two people who work on the duplication process. Yes, we do. Are there going to be teams of two yes. working on the duplication process, or are we only going to have one Canvas team member working on duplication for each ballot? Uh, no, we will follow the procedures uh, established by the state board, and it will be two members duplicating. Okay, so, it, so that's just the way this, this one was, was, was written. Um, the limit of 10 people, that was, uh, when you made that decision, was there consultation with any county health officials, or was that your own determination? It's based on the county executive's recommendation that we are to maintain a six-foot social distancing requirement. I'm, I'm not going to say that I do plan on sitting down with the county uh, health department uh, personnel to review um, all of the voting sites as well as the Canvas site where the public and the election judges will be so that we are not jeopardizing anyone's health. 
Right, but, I, but, but in terms of whether it's 10 or 5 or 15 or 20, um, because I gather that one option, you're going to be setting up a certain number of canvas tables. If you had, if you have more tables, you have less public. If you have fewer tables, you have more room for more public. Correct. Performance the schedule. Well, David, the the if you look at the picture that we provided, it's pretty clear that there are gym seats there along one whole wall, and so we would expect the public to the public canvas observers to sit along that wall. Um, we, real, uh, when uh, Boris and I and Michelle and uh, a couple other members uh, went and looked at the location, we felt that if you look at what um, I call the foul line of the basketball court, um, that area could be set aside very easily for the public to observe. And we're certainly open to listening to the Department of Health professionals to make the suggestion as to what is the best uh, seating arrangement for that area. But using well, just, the I'll, recommendation I'll of the Department of Health, we... I think that... Well, go ahead. I said go ahead. using the recommendations of the Department of Health with six-foot spacing and six six basically 36 square feet more or less for each individual to be safely ensconced in their space um we uh boris boris made the <coughs> he measured it out with us and we see that 10 people could easily be seated and that does that include the ada chair did that in the center uh, we calculated that with the cat okay so we calculated that with the wheelchair slash scooter area so um let, 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 let me see if i let, let me see if i if i understand the the decision you're saying that only 10 people can sit in that seating area that you've shown us on this document but again the decision to limit the visitors to that seating area is also a decision for the board, right? I mean, because you have a whole gymnasium that is going to be used for this purpose. I mean, part of what I'm concerned about is is that 10 is a, is a very small number. Um, 10, including media, basically eliminates the public because if, you know, three TV stations come, and they each have a camera person and a reporter, and the, you know sometimes they have a third person. Um, you know, then that that potentially um, eliminates the public as well. We are in the midst of uh, a, not only an extraordinarily contentious election, but one in which there are many people who are not trusting of the other side, whatever whoever the other side is defined to be for whoever is doing the trusting. Um, and so it sounds like we made a decision to limit the public to that bench and that 10 people sit on that bench. But um, if we were to, for example, if we were to say that we wanted to have 10 people plus the media, uh, I assume that we would come up with ground rules for what the media would do. But the media also is not going to want to shoot from you know, from one side of the room in all likelihood. And um, I believe that if it were a polling place, we would allow them to do that. In our own building, if we do the canvas, we allow the media to come. So uh, I guess I'm trying to understand on what basis we would be limiting both the media and the public to that one small area. David, probably, I mean, you're, you're talking about the past when we are conducting elections in a whole different environment. As I said earlier, I, with the staff, are, are plan to, and I mentioned it this morning in our COVID-19 planning, to sit down with the health department personnel to review not only this location, if the board chooses to approve this location, but as well as all of the early voting centers and uh, vote centers to make sure that we have the correct social distancing, we have our formulas proper so that 
no one's health is in jeopardy. Using Agreed. these simple requirements that are part of the county executive's order with regard to social distancing, right now it's 10 people. If you want us to factor in carte blanche for the media, that's the board, board's decision. No. No, I didn't say that. I did not say that. I, I, I did not say that. I, I just said that I didn't want the media to count, to count as sitting on that bench. Uh, I didn't say carte blanche for the media. Also, the county executive, as I understand it, you can tell me if I'm wrong, did the county executive tell us that we're limited to 10 people, or was that your decision? I assume that it was the latter. You're trying to, to, to follow the guidance that you were given. None of us want anyone's health to be put in jeopardy, but we all want to balance the need for the public to be confident in our work with, with the special situation that we are in this year with the health concerns that we have. So what I'm trying to explore with you, which is difficult given the amount of time that we didn't have for having this conversation, but what I'm trying to explore with you is to what the options are. Because the op we know that the options are not simply um, 10 people or endanger people's health. We know that there are uh, lots of ways to make, uh, to endanger people's health less or more, um, depending on how you set up the room. And if you had another area where either the media or the public could, could be, um, and you know, that would also um, be an option. What I'm trying to say is, is that I think that the ability of the public, <coughs> including the media, also including the public, also including both political parties, I personally would at least reserve one spot each for the, you know, for the Democratic and Republican Party representatives so that each one of them could have somebody observing um, because Again, there is, there, there is a lot of concern in the public to make sure that, you know, uh, those of us who've been through this process have the least concern about how it's being conducted because we've seen the professionalism of both our permanent staff and of our volunteer canvassers. But for those who haven't been through this process before, the more we lock them out, the more they're going to be concerned about what exactly it is we're doing. So I personally would like us to consider options to, um, to include more people. Um, David? And, yes, Jack. I, uh, I'm just, I think your uh, suggestion about having a place reserved for a Republican and a Democrat who have official, uh, uh, official credentials is a good idea. But I think we need to not second guess on a board the very professional staff we have and the health department who are obviously working together and have worked very hard to put this together. I think we have to be very careful. Jackie, that is, not, that, is, them. that is not what Margaret just said. She said she wants to talk to the health department, not that she has. Um, My and, opinion will be, and, and, that'll, and that'll be and, taken care of. And, well, but, but again, we are the representatives of the public, okay? All of us on the board are the representatives yeah. of, 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 the, of, the, of, of the public. And so... Margaret, Jim, David, can I just weigh in on this one? Who is that? Cheryl Kagan. Who is that, Senator? Can I... No, it, no, it's... Yeah, it's, 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 it's no, I'm going to weigh in. I just oh, I also, weigh in on... Uh, couple of things, um, and one, it, the fact that you haven't had more time to review this is quite frankly my fault. Um, we've been working around the clock on this, and you know, Margaret wrote this up last night, sent it to me for me to edit, and I didn't edit it, it's hard for her to get it to you earlier, so I just wanted to say that, where, you know, so we appreciate that there's questions that you may have that we can answer, um, but I thought maybe it would help in terms of just the visual. When you look at the document that Margaret circulated, there is a photograph, there's a couple photographs, but there's one on the front page where you can see more of a wide angle on the room. And to compare what the staff recommendation is here with what we would have experienced in the past, you remember that in the last couple of elections, and certainly we have more observers rather than fewer, we've had the tape line on the floor. 
And if you look at that photograph, there's like a black line that you see along the left side of the photo. The, the door to come into the room would be to the left of what you see in the photo, and the door to leave the room is in the back. And so effectively what you have is an area behind that black line where we're assuming a single file with chairs distance six feet apart behind that black line so that people would have adequate distancing for them to come in to have a seat, but then to go, be able to go around each other in an area that is, that is taped off, basically behind that black line, it, you know, as opposed to the blue tape line that we would normally have in the past. So, you know, when you don't have chairs in front of the door coming in and you don't have chairs in front of the door coming out, and then in that bleacher section through the middle, you have a chair space six feet apart across the wall, that's where you get to the tent. Did you all consider other locations? I thought I had heard at one point that Gaithersburg High School was under consideration. And is it larger or smaller or the same size as this location? Uh, Gaithersburg High School is not close, is not as close as this facility is. It is not a facility that we can totally control for security. Additionally, um, it's not that Gaithersburg High School has been completely removed, but for the beginning process, we believe that Plumgar is a better location for from now until uh, November 5th uh, because of the requirements to not only conduct the canvas, but also to prepare for the election. There's a finite number of people that work in this department that are subject matter experts, and we need to have them close by. And driving down to Gaithersburg High School. Additionally, we would have to vacate the complete uh, high school because we're moving in there, um, I forget when, but sometime like right before the election on November 3rd, with all of our equipment to set that up to conduct uh, the actual election for election day. So that is not really a good site for us until after we get all of our equipment out of there. Margaret, two quick questions. It seems like we, 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 have, we have picked a, a, a site that, um, if it is smaller, um, I mean, I believe, that, I believe that the site you picked is about a mile and a half away from the board, and the high school is about three miles away from the board. Um, but it, it does seem like we picked a site where um, we are making it, um, we're making it difficult for the public. Let me um, ask a couple of other questions. Um, when we say that we're going to be canvassing from 10 o'clock to end, um, does that mean to finish whatever ballots have been received at that point, or is there some time at which we decide that we, we're past the point of productive work? The, um, the process will, will work so that um, the initial plan is that at they would start at 10 o'clock um, and then approximately 2, 2.30, whatever's been opened would be trucked down to the server room so that um, the IT team could begin the process of scanning ballots. In the meantime, whatever we have been able to process into MD voters and, and, bund and prepared for that day, uh, we would like to finish that day so that um, the staff in IT could be done on a timely basis because, again, I want to point out the IT staff, these finite number of individuals, not only are preparing the units and everything that goes out to the polling places, whether it's early voting or the vote centers, but they're also going to have to scan these ballots simultaneously. Okay, thank you. Um, and then um, under the ballot scanning, it says the following. The zero reports will be posted on the windows of training room three on the lower level. This is the same location where the board has traditionally posted the tapes for ballots scanned at the board office, so this is no change from past practice. Um, if I understand correctly, there is a change from past practice. That is that the public is not allowed in the building. So are we going to be displaying our zero reports for the public that won't be allowed to look at them? 
David, they've always been posted on the outside window. That, so they're so right saying, there. You, they're, they're all, so I mean, so I don't know how you've ever missed it. There's hundreds of them that are taped against that window in tray number three. So that all you have to do is walk up to the window and look in. Room three. Which, I'm sorry, which room is training room three? It's the lower level canvas room that you've canvassed in before. Okay. And what you're saying is, is that it's going to be posted on that window. Would it be possible for us instead to have a camera on it so that people can see the zero reports if they want to without having to come to our building that we're telling them they can't come inside to? Or maybe in addition to have a camera on it? I don't think that there's an ability to put a camera on it, David, at this time. Can't because it's facing outside, so it'll probably. Okay, um, then, then my, my next question is you, you talked about the, the, the safety issues of the heavy carts moving back and forth in our building. Um, aren't the same carts going to be moving back and forth at the rec center? No. So how is that going to work? How are the ballots going to get um, from um, the board office to the rec center to the gymnasium? Uh, David, we're talking about four to six black cards holding 255 different precincts plus four to six scanners, um, four to ten ballot marking devices going back and forth between one warehouse to another warehouse plus the, the blue bins that go within the scanners. So the carts that we send to the um, plum guard lo location are much smaller carts and are not holding that magnitude of equipment, I mean, e of ballots, period. I mean, we're sending literally 30,000 to 36,000 ballots to each of our voting centers. And that, so I mean, you are talking that, about that maybe five the, to six thousand ballots coming back, going from here to Plumgar and coming back. So, I mean, this, so so you're comparing the, grapes so the and the black boxes, if you want people to avoid at the board office, those are the boxes that are going out to the uh, polling places. Is that what you're saying? Yes. The equipment that's all going out to the polling places or vote centers. And, and the difference from the past is that in the past we wouldn't have been canvassing while we were doing that because we would have been canvassing after the election, not before the election. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Diane? Yes, <clears throat> quick follow up. Um, since we're going to be limited on the number of seats for the public, we sort of piggyback, piggybacks on what David suggested about the GOP and the um, and the Democrat rep. And there was a suggestion that maybe we would people would have to make reservations or whatever. I just want to make sure that there's a bar by that there will be ensured room for bipartisan admittance from members um so regardless of who gets there first i want to make sure that there's an apportioned two-party um representation from the public not just the parties but you know we've got candidates also but just from the public um any comments Matt? Again, uh, we're certainly open to setting up, uh, if you want to say that uh, you want appointments made and that there's receipts reserved for each political party, we can accommodate that. Um, as I said earlier, and I, I don't think I'm saying it very effectively uh, again, is that we are meeting with the whole, uh, emergency management Health and Human Services to review all of our uh, vote center and campus locations to determine that we are 
properly socially distancing uh, for each location. And that would include Plumgar or Gaithersburg High School if we should go there after the election. So uh, okay. if you and want to one, have appointments, I mean, quite honestly, if you anywhere you want to go here in, in Maryland or even when I was in Ocean City, you had to make a reservation. So there's no problem with that. I mean, we can certainly require and post on our website that you need to make a reservation and we'll make reservations in two, four hour uh, increments, whatever the board chooses to direct us staff to do. Okay, and then um, <clears throat> this is just hopefully thinking, but the rest of the state is going into a phase three opening. Let's just hope this county exec can get Montgomery brought up to speed with the other areas and perhaps that would allow us <clears throat> more seats because of the space issue. But again, so I want it to be flexible because hopefully by canvas time, there won't be a six foot recommendation or a cap on the number of people, and, and this won't be quite as critical trying to fit people into small spaces. That's not going to change. That ain't changing. And who said that? I, I, don't, I don't know who said that. No one on my staff said but, that. Yeah, could the commenter please identify himself? 2407778531. That's us. That's not, we didn't say anything. Oh. Okay, okay. Jim, honey, move on. Okay. I'm going to go, Diane, I'm going to go to, uh, Elise. I'm going to go to Elise. Are you finished, Diane? I'm sorry. Done? Okay. Yes, Elise? I have done. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Elise? Um, I, I have no questions about that particular part. Okay. Uh, Jackie? Um, I think the staff has done a wonderful job organizing this nightmare. That's it. You know, can, can I talk? You guys, we have to realize it can change beyond our control. So we have to adapt. We try to do everything, but we have to work together because it's something that's beyond our control. The state opened it, but it's still the six feet is in effect. You can go to a restaurant inside, but six feet is still in, in, a, in effect. You cannot just go regularly. It's not like that. So we have to keep that in our mind. Thank you. Alan? Yeah, I have uh, three questions. Uh, Margaret, before I think in answering questions from Jim, you indicated some methods. Were those members of the New York ballot application that you received? He wanted to know the ballot applications. Is that what you were talking about that you received? I do. 600,000. I didn't write that. Um, uh, the the number of applications we've received to date as of this morning was 231,990 and we have a backlog of approximately 53,500. Thank you. That leads to my next question. Obviously the, the state board has allowed us to start canvassing on October 1st. I, I, I guess you feel that October the six is, is uh, time enough to get all the canvassing in? Well, um, first of all, the mail was being is being trucked and entering the U.S. Postal mail stream on September 25th. And even though it's going out first class, it would take three to five days to get it delivered. So I don't believe that we would have that many ballots in-house to really do any canvassing whatsoever significant canvassing. We believe that by October 6th, we would see 
and I, you know, at least a thousand or more uh, voted ballots, and it would give us an opportunity for you to convene, to begin the canvas, and to allow our canvas election judges an opportunity to come to the location, become familiar with the process, because as you may all recall, the first couple of days, it always goes slow because everybody's trying to remember, you know, what the rules are and what the procedures are, and they have a lot of questions, and then they start, you know, rolling pretty fast. So we believe that October 6th was a reasonable date to begin the state, the begin the canvas. Thank you. The third question: Look at these pictures of. It's in that uh, fun bar. Do it. Do that yeah, bench come in? Um, in other words, does that, does that give you three levels there, the bench? The bench is, is it three levels? Two levels. We're not planning on using the bench, we're planning on using chairs. Oh, well, well, okay. We're using both. So, uh, because that, was, that was the question I was going to ask. With, with the chair, you can easily. Uh, right. We're going to, we're going to, we're, again, we need to talk to the experts with regards to, I mean, we have uh, what we believe is a plan, but we need to talk to, and, and I spoke, as I mentioned, to the COVID-19 recovery group this morning, and we are going to meet, we are going to go through all of this information with regards to the amount of equipment that's going in there, the number of election judges, and how much square footage we have left for the voters. So it is important for you to realize that while it is intended for the bench to be used, if we can add chairs safely and accordance to the guidance of the HHS, yes, we'll add chairs. Is there a reason why this needs to be um, adopted today? Um, if, if there are still conversations to be had about that, because I, I know that a number of us um, both would like to have more opportunity to e examine the document you sent us and also, I think, um, figure out ways to, um, at the very least, not count the media as part of the tent, let alone whatever other options there may be. Um, I would prefer that this be finalized today, and if the board wishes to have direct the staff not to count the media as part of the personnel in the room because they're going to be in and out, that's fine with me. Margaret, two, two quick questions. One, notwithstanding how many people are allowed to be in person, will the campus still be live streamed in no. addition? No. I, I can't have the staff, IT staff, it'll be live streamed for uh, scanning the ballots, but I can't have the IT staff up there live streaming, and th there's just not enough staff. Okay. And, and as David asked, what, is there a deadline when we have to submit our plan, or? We have to submit the plan so we can, the staff can begin our plan to start, you know, telling election judges we need to, you know, we're, our first date is October 6th and get the people lined up, the tables, the chairs, the, the how are we going to move it, who's going to do all the work. We can't wait any longer. Can we, can, can the board... I, I have one more question about the plan as well. Well, I was just going to say, I, I, I agree with David, there's, a, there's a, some fine tuning that I think we can do after you meet with the health people. Can we present the plan to you today, but keep the number of people and the logistics of how the in-person will go aside? Because maybe we I, can get more 10 or? Again, I, I, have I have no objection whatsoever if the board wishes to adopt this plan and then wait for and to amend the number of people, the public, that's fine. But we need to lock down the location. We need to lock down the dates. We need to be able to plan how many how many people we're going to need for each day. Okay. So if you want to 
wait until uh, emergency management and HHS weigh in on the public guidance on how many people can observe the process that I don't have a problem with that but as long as you understand that that's the only component. element that is the outstanding component but I cannot you cannot conduct an election and have public video streaming at there with the public there and still expect all of the equipment to be prepared the, the staff we don't have the depth we don't have the, the staff on site to prepare the voting equipment as well as to conduct canvas video streaming up so, at so we can there. move forward but withhold the component of the in-person logistics the public viewing of the the public the public permitted on-site for social distancing enforcement yes that would be something that we're definitely open to deferring until we meet with all of our experts David, David. Um, a couple of thoughts about that first of all I think we have a bit of a chicken and an egg situation because if we choose the location we may be limiting the number of members of the public um, especially if the location we're choosing we're choosing because it is closer to the board but it may not be as large as some other as, as some other options um, then I, I have a question about the the, the process itself um, that I didn't notice um, when I first looked at this it appears that we are now talking about using ballot marking devices as part of the duplication process which um, Correct me if I'm wrong. I think in the past we've been hand duplicating ballots. Um, could you explain to us how that would work? And you know, have we done that before? Yes, we have done it before. Um, we did it in 2018. Uh, it's just an option that um, the staff put on the table. Um, I'm going to tell you quite honestly that it was. Um, the when the election judges in 2018 were using the ballot marking device it was not um, it was not it was slower than the hand duplication so we did not um, utilize it that much uh, in 2018 we depend I mean we have a younger cohort in terms of people that are coming in to serve as election judges there's certainly a possibility that we could use the ballot marking device, but if the board doesn't want us to use ballot marking devices, believe me, uh, Janet and the IT team don't have a problem with that. That's just that less equipment that they have to prepare. If we do use the ballot marking device, um, will that be harder for a second person to check, or would it be, I mean, how would that work? You still have to use two people. One person marks the ballot? It's just like when, I, I don't know if you've ever did the public testing where they tested during the public testing of the ballot marking device. You still have two people. No, it's not any faster, and it, uh, Michelle probably would tell you it's slower. I mean, if, if it's slower, I'm not sure um, why we're doing it, but, um, um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, um, well, I, I guess it's a question for the board as to whether we want to um, um, suggest to the public that we'll be using ballot marking devices, especially if we think it's going to be slower. If we think it's going to be slower, I personally would be against it because I think we're going to have our hands full with, with being on time. Um, but um, I, I realize others, others may feel differently. I, I, I'm concerned over the idea that we might approve a plan today to be at a particular location that may limit the number of people. I'm really concerned about limiting the number of people without um, live streaming. Um, and I'm even more concerned about limiting the number of people to 10 without live streaming and limiting the media as part of that 10. I mean, we're getting really close to making it so no one can watch um, or that it's very, very difficult to watch. Um, has any thought been given to try to get IT staff from other parts of county or state government to assist with the process? Because uh, live streaming is something that is done all over government. Uh, it's not just in in the Board of Elections. And I didn't know whether there's uh, whether anyone has given any any thought to that. 
But again, the more we keep people out, the more suspicious they get. And um, I'm not suspicious. I know our staff, um, but a lot of people don't. Um, and um, and this is going to, you know, this this particular election is going to. Uh, there are going to be people who who will be trying to heighten everybody's suspicions. So um, I, I would want us to consider that. And let me add to what David, this is Diane, let me add to what David just said. I mean, yeah, I have absolute, complete faith in our staff, but aren't these canvassers going to be people who have volunteered from the public? I mean, we can't vouch for, I, I'm not, I'm not challenging anybody's integrity, but the point is, it's not going to be all staffers, and I think that rises, raises the level even higher that we want to have this open and transparent. I certainly appreciate everything the staff is trying to do to keep social distancing and things safe, but I agree with David on all these points. And then one other quick question about the ballot duplicating. So I'm marking before we go back. Unfortunately, everybody, since I'm brand new, <clears throat> I'm unfamiliar with that, and I don't want to take up time here to learn how that works, but, but my question in that regard is to make sure that we maintain the bipartisan team that does ballot duplicating. And we I do. And I leave those questions open. So for those reasons, I would not be able to approve, to approve a plan. We do today. We do, we do, the teams that work on your canvassing team are election judges and they are Democrat, Republican teams. They have been in the past, they were in the primary, and that's just the way it is. So does that mean two people? One Democrat, one Republican. One Democrat, one Republican, and they verify one another's work. Okay, so I got clear with one of David's questions. No, she she answered that 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 was what we were going to be doing. My my concern, I have no concern with our canvassers. Um, my concern is that again, we're you know, anyone who watches the process and sees that we have one of each party doing this. I think it's going to feel good about the process. They're going to feel like this is exactly the way it's supposed to work, but we're setting it up in such a way that almost no one is going to see it. Um, and and the people, if people don't see it, that's where we start getting into the questions that people ask because there are a number of misunderstandings about, um, about what's going on. So, uh, Jim, I don't know if it's possible for us to have... Uh, you know, to, to allow Margaret to have her, her meeting with the health officials first and then to approve this because um, I do think that we should be considering options that um, um, that would allow as much of the public as we can and also alternatively maybe it's like kind of an and or um, allow for, uh, for video streaming of uh, the portion of the canvas, if it can be done by someone who's not on our staff, because I do realize that our staff has other things to do, especially in the month of October. Um, um, you know, as we're leading up to the to, to the election, and I know that we have a shortage of staff, but like I said, video streaming is something that you know I I, I, I realize that I'm not in a position to say it's simple because I don't know how to do it, um, but I know that for many people it is not difficult. Can I say something? Yes. Whatever we do, we have to move fast. The staff do not have the end of the century to decide. The building, they have to decide. The logistics, they have to decide today, tomorrow. They don't have the luxury to wait for another month. That's our problem. I'm not, suggest suggest I'm not suggesting wait another month. We can meet later this week. We can go to some meeting tomorrow for, you know, for Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I, I just, I, I just feel like, and I've been a little bit of a Johnny. I've, I've been a little bit of a Johnny one note on this. I've been suggesting. I, well, let me, well, let me just, let me just finish my point. Yeah, one at a time. So you have to move in to this thing. Decide to go to this place. How soon do you have to let 
them know. It's reserved now. Is Gaithersburg High School also reserved? I believe so. Well, yeah, it has to be because of the the fact that we're using it as a voting center. No, I'm, Gaithersburg I'm High School is not a very good viable option for this board staff to conduct a canvas as well as prepare for the election. If you want to go there after November 5th, that's fine. But we need to be able to be on top of all of our work and driving down to Gaithersburg High School is too much. You're just burning up time that we don't have. And for, for a three mile, 10 minute drive. It, you know, you assume it's a, ten, it, Montgomery Village Avenue is not always an easy avenue to get through. I am requesting that the board support the Plumgar location from October 6th to November 5th and to, for the, the public canvas that has to be conducted. Um, I'm completely open to the uh, allowing us to meet with the health and human services and emergency management and Homeland Security people about how many people are allowed on site. I certainly am willing to talk to someone in the Department of Technology Services to see if they have someone who wants to sit there with a laptop camera, but it's not going to be the staff of the Board of Elections. So if that part, if we can just get approval to conduct the canvas and you come back when we meet with HHS and all the other people to deal with the public uh, process. I'll come back as soon as I get some answers from the experts. We said from the very beginning, I think I've said it several times now, we wish to meet with the Health and Human Services and others with regards to how we can lay out the public process for the public canvas. So we can move forward and hold Jim, that I suggest, this is Jack. Jim? Yes. This is Jackie. Yes. I suggest that we vote on giving Margaret the ability to lock in the place they're going to do the canvas, Plumgar, and that we keep reserve how many people they're going to be for us to discuss later. I think she also needs us to confirm the dates as well. Yes. So, Margaret, what do you need? You need the... Uh, uh, I need from the, the staff recommendations starting with Ballas will be go to Plumgar with the date meeting dates of the canvas team election judges, the board of canvassers meeting uh, of the dates from October 13th through October 27th. So you need the place and the dates? Yes. <coughs> okay. Is there a motion in that regard? It, I'm sorry. Yeah, and that includes uh, video streaming of the ballot scanning process. Video the, screening of the ballot, ballot process, the scanning. Video screening, yes. And, on, and we can streaming. reserve on possible video streaming of the other part of the canvas. Sure. You can, yeah. and, okay. and we're reserving on the number of uh, members of the public, it sounds like, until after Margaret has her other uh, for other duties. did not put that in the motion. You're correct. That's correct, right? Well, but not putting it in does not mean that it comes back to us. I want to make sure that we're going to have an opportunity um, to to discuss those things after Margaret has her meeting. So, Jim, are we going to, would we plan As to I have said, a, a, another said, meeting? We could have it later this week, perhaps? David, I have to I don't set know what up, meeting David, was. I have to set up the meeting first, okay? As soon as I can get the meeting set up with the subject matter experts, I will get their recommendations and I will work with Jim and Kevin and you to find a perfect date to discuss this public element so that everyone uh, is as relatively happy as they can be with this particular situation. So it would be staff recommendations starting with the ballots uh, will be taken to Plumgar through the ballots, the last sentence, 
the use of live streaming will allow every anyone the opportunity to watch the process safely. And the motion will include we're reserved. Uh, reserve wait a second. Where, where are we, Margaret? Where's that? that you just referred to because that's last, not what Jackie said. The last sentence, it says Second. ballot scanning. The last sentence under ballot scanning. So in other words, well, no, because there's, there's a number of things that are in between there that talk about the number of members of the public. I think Jackie should restate her motion. I, uh, let's see if I can do it this way. More on... No, there's nothing that in there that talks about the public. Recommendation other than the number of the public that is involved. And that to be discussed uh, later. Um, I, I, I would like to I, I suggest one other change to, that can be discussed later, um, and that is the part that says that the public will not be permitted to observe the scanning and tabulation in person. And the reason being that, it, depending on what the health officials say, we should have that input before we make that decision finally. All right, Margaret, does, does that go along all right? No, that does not work for the Board of Elections it's staff. It is a safety issue. We are moving heavy equipment from one warehouse through a hallway where they people could possibly observe the 850s to another warehouse. This is a safety issue. This is big, heavy carts. People could get hurt. Live streaming yes, Margaret, of the canvas we is were there, the safest way to do it. David, if you were here, there wouldn't us, be a pandemic. Right, but if one of us were there, you, you, you would say to us, carts are coming through. We, you know, David, we're, we're, you're assuming I can I'm stand there. I am not going to stand Why there the entire time. There are things that have to be accomplished. We have 40 voting centers that have to be prepared for every voter to show up at any one of these locations. Father, we are very aware of the uh, amount of work that you and the staff have to do. We're also aware of the um, significant interest in the public in everything that we do. All I'm suggesting at this point, I'm not suggesting that we open the building to the public anytime they want to come. I'm not even suggesting that we open the building to the public at all. All I'm suggesting is, is that we not make that decision until you've had a chance to talk with um, both the health officials and the technology officials to see what it is we're going to be able to do with live streaming because we are, we are deciding to exclude people before we're deciding to include people. And yeah. I'm suggesting that issue. anything that has to do Straight with out. excluding or including people, we do at one time. That's all Jim, I'm you, uh, Jim, would you uh, get my motion read back and let's oh. make sure you, Jim, please make sure it's correct. And then... Let's see if we can't get a vote on it. You want me to try this? Uh, right. Kevin, yeah, did you hear me? Yeah. yeah, Kevin Kevin is going to... Uh, to summarize Jackie's motion, I believe it is to accept the board, number one, to accept the board's recommendation, staff. staff's recommendation to use Plumgar uh, beginning October 6th through November 7th with the canvas, the board meeting to commence the canvas at 10 o'clock uh, there will be public uh, observation at Plumgar Community Recreation Center. The scanning will take place at the Montgomery County Board of Elections, uh, and that will be uh, observed virtually by the public. And that the Board of Canvassers will meet on October 13, 20, and 27 to review any ballots that have been referred for the Board's consideration. I believe that is the motion that you made, Jack. Well, is there a reservation part of it right, that thank we're, you. we're reserving? Well, we're just I second that. I second you. Public discussion. Mr. President. Oh, public discussion. Okay. Mr. President. Yes. I, I would like to propose an I would like to propose an amendment, and um, and and that amendment would be um, that uh, the 
to, to add to the notion that the board will make decisions about the public's ability to observe the scanning and tabulation um, after um, it, it, the, the director has an opportunity to consult with health officials. This has nothing to do with health officials. This has to do with the safety my of motion, the public. My, my, my motion does. That is, it, it, it has to do with it, it has to do with health for sure. Anytime someone comes into the building, that has to do with health. You're saying it has to do with safety. I'm saying that you probably have a system in place so that people don't get run over by cars to work for you. Um, and the same could be true for the public. I'm asking that we amend the motion to say that we will make that decision later. So if you would rather it not be tied to your meeting with health officials, fine. I'll say we, we, should, we, just, we just make that decision later. Um, but um, I'm proposing that we not make that decision today. That, uh, David, that, nothing about how many people or whatever is in my motion. So that would automatically be a... No, you're, you're, the way Kevin just read your motion, he said that the observation of the scanning and tabulation would be virtual only. And if you were to remove that, then I would be okay, and we can make that decision later. I understand that, you know, you were attempting to postpone the decision about the number of people in person at Plumgar. I am suggesting that we also postpone the number of people at the Board of Elections. And if you're amenable to that, um, you know, that gives us an opportunity to find out more information about... Um, um, about what the options are, but my own view is is that if we exclude people from our building, you know, we are asking for people to be suspicious of what we do. There's nothing suspicious that we do. Um, I want to make that very clear. Jim, do you have any comment on that? Well, I'm, I mean, Margaret is very insistent that this is a safety issue, and uh, I don't see how that's going to change after meeting with anybody outside the, the board, Margaret. I mean, is there any, 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 any Jim, Jim, if you, if you or I were at the board observing the tabulation, I'm sure that we would find a way for us not to be run over by the cart. And all I'm suggesting is, is that we can do the same thing for a very limited number of members of the public, even if it's one person from the Democratic Party and one person from the Republican They're Party. They're not going to see anything except Margaret, watching. Margaret, not as important. What were you going to say? The, we are working. This is, this is a working warehouse. And what's important is that there will be four cameras drilled down on the four high-speed scanners. The public will probably see more using those video cameras than if they were uh, downstairs in the way, ready to get hurt when somebody is pushing these carts through. There is a lot of equipment that is being moved back and forth. This is not a safe place for the public to be, and it's not safe for the uh, employees that are trying to get their job done in a very short period of time. And each one of the scanners will be under, under the camera? Yes. All four? All four. We purchased four okay. cameras. We can put the four cameras right above it. We will latch it to the wall or the ceiling. Diane, did you say something? Will there be, yeah, um, will there be any duplicating going on, anything other than scanning? Nothing but scanning. I mean, I've, I've observed the scanning. I mean, you can't see, you can't see the ballot itself. It's just a lot of paper going rapidly through a machine. It's walking, like watching a copy. I, I know. I mean, I, I, I didn't suggest that it was going to be exciting for somebody. I was just suggesting that we, it, it is best for us to make it available to people and then let them decide that it's not worth their effort. Um, because I agree, it's like watching a copier. It is not an exciting thing to watch, except when we're at the very end and you're looking and you're trying to count down as to when we're done. But be that as it may, the fact that people are able to see it, there's a, you know, there's a window there for a reason. Um, and um, it is because there are at least some members of the public 
who may be interested in seeing it until they discover that it's not all that interesting. But um, I, I, I'm still advocating that we um, not include that in the motion, and um, you know, obviously everyone can can vote how they want to vote. But that's that's where I come from. Margaret, what in terms of the safety issue? If if we allow one member designated by each central committee. One, in other words, Again, one. There's the a there is a finite amount of space in that hallway. I'm just talking about two people. It, I'm telling you, there's a finite amount of space. Did you not? Did you? Did you there's not? There's a finite amount of space. There's a finite amount of space everywhere. There's a there's finite amount of space with a very large, heavy black cart coming through that su could s significantly hurt someone. Therefore, it is not, it's a working warehouse. It is not safe for the public to be there. That's why we have four cameras that will be drilled down and they can watch ballots go through, zip, zip, zip. Well, Margaret feels very strongly about this. I personally will defer to Margaret uh, as an operational decision and for the well-being of, of the staff. So, uh, is there a second to David's motion? Second. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of David's motion, which basically defers. Can I get their names too, please? We, have to, we need a vote by name. Yeah. Okay. Do it by roll call. By roll call. All right. Any other discussion on David's motion? Okay. I'm going to do it by roll call for the benefit of our transcription of our minutes. Uh, Jim Shalek, I vote no. David. No, he's closing the book. No. David? I vote yes. Diane? Yes. Uh, Elise? Yes. So is that five? Yeah, that's five votes. Yeah. What's the vote? Three. Two to three. Two to three. Pass. So yes. Right, so David's motion passes. So now we go back to. The original motion? Yes. Sure. Okay. Now, Kevin. As amended. As amended. Right. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't get a second from Jackie's original motion. Was the, there a second? Was there a second to Jackie's yes, original motion? Yes, somebody did second it. Who did? I seconded. Well, okay, now he seconded. Any discussion on the motion that uh, Kevin recited, which basically is to approve staff recommendation uh, except for the discussion and the decision on the number of persons in the public that, that can view the canvas. And, and don't forget David's the video amendment. streaming. Yes. So now there's David's amendment to add. And, no, that and we to that a decision we add. And to allow the public into a dangerous hallway. To make a decision on the scanning and tabulation yes, after you discuss it with the health officials. Yeah, no, the, the David's motion doesn't approve that yet. It just delays our vote on that until you meet with Correct. the health the health people. The health people are not have don't have anything never mind. Vote however you're gonna vote. Okay. All right, so any other discussion on, on that motion? I'll take another uh, roll call vote. Uh, Jim Shalek, I vote yes. Uh Naheed? No he was What was your vote Naheed? Yes. Yes. She said yes. Yes. David? I said yes. Yeah, David. Uh, yes. Uh, yep. Diane? Yes. Elise? Yes. Okay, so that's, that's unanimous. Okay, so do we, are we, is there a separate discussion on the election plan update, Margaret? I have no idea at this point. Um, well, Jim, you might as well pull the board about when they're available for a special meeting because that's what you're going to have to have between now and October 6th. Well, we need to know when, Margaret, when you, when you uh, give me the green light, we'll set up a new meeting as soon as possible. So we need to make sure we notify the public of this meeting as soon as possible right. as well. But we're not going to do it until after Margaret meets. So. We, we can do that rapidly. We can set that up. Mark, is there anything on the election plan update? Uh, not really. Um, I sent it to the board. Oh, the election judge uh, uh, report 
uh, was sent out rather late to, uh, oh, I know, there's a couple of different things. Uh, we'd sent out the election judge report to, uh, uh, to the members of the board just to kind of give you an update as to what's going on. Um, the, I don't have the, oh, she's bringing it up. Um, slowly but surely, the, uh, we've been on the phones, especially over the last two weekends, trying, while well, people have signed up and uh, agreed to do the quiz, um, the getting them over to the online training as well as getting them signed up, that's a little slower process, so we've been working the phones to get people uh, to sign, get their online training done as well as sign up for a training class. But, um, you know, the process is being, um, we're, you know, we're making headway. Um, we've met with public safety several times. We are um, w coordinating uh, the cameras and the 24-hour-7 uh, security cameras on all of the drop boxes. Um, we have had <coughs> to coordinate with the county to purchase some security cameras as well as upgrade some, and that's occurred. Um, the liaisons have all been appointed. The Department of General Services will be delivering a generator to uh, provide us energy in case there's a blackout or something. Uh, we've uh, started to identify those sites that need additional lighting because of the daylight savings time. Um, the banners for early voting, uh, we've got that all out. The banners have been given to the Department of General Services. Plexiglass for all the polling places, we had to add some. so. That's been in the process. Uh, PPE supplies, we've had to do some ordering to supplement the SBE order. Fleet Services is loaning us vehicles from other departments that have just kind of been sitting. We do have some vans on site. Um, and they, of course, will have personnel assisting us uh, to unload vehicles on election night, as well as um, in order to pack 255 ballot styles into uh, 40 locations, there was some construction requirement that was required, so that's been added. Um, pr print shop is well aware of our timelines and they're working with us. Personnel um, been very supportive in site si t helping us do the signal testing and telecommunications. Um, they're in the, also in the process of preparing the buildings. Uh, we're trying to uh, minimize our costs and coordinating with them to uh, borrow tables and chairs from other sections of the county so we don't have to pay, rent them, as well as uh, cleaning the locations. Um, the uh, community use and public facility staff have volunteered to set out signage at our traditional polling places, directing voters to... Um, to call or uh, go to call. They'll be using MoCo votes or 77788 to find the closest vote center. Um, the schools have agreed to post a sign where the vote centers are in the county and we're working with the private and non-public uh, facilities to get that same information out. The Department of Technology Services um, is working on our website and um, one of the features that we're adding is that the wait time besides the early voting locations, we are going to add websites so that if you were to text uh, 77788 or go to MoCo Vote and you punch in your zip code, uh, not only would you find the three closest locations, but you would have... Um, the wait times for all three locations. So hopefully people would go to those locations that are closest and have the shortest wait time. Um, of course, Department T, uh, DTS is going to help us post election results election night. Um, we're upgrading the whole MoCo votes because it was based on polling places and now we're 
flipping it to vote centers, so they have to kind of rewrite the programming. Um, the public test will be October 19th at 10 a.m., and so uh, we need to have at least one board member available via video when we conduct that. And also, um, uh, that same day, we will do the public testing and verification. All of our public school locations have been reserved. Um, we're coordinating the cameras, 24-7 uh, uh, surveillance, notification of the vote centers posted on the doors of the traditional polling places, as I previously mentioned. Facilities identified, utilization of space. Um, they are also complying with all the COVID-19, so no fountain, water fountains will be functioning. We will have restrooms uh, available as well as soap and water so that people can wash their hands, as well as our election judges. Uh, transportation meetings, there have been several of those with the state board with regards to transporting drop boxes, voting equipment, and everything else. Um, we also um, met with county transportation to arrange for the poll books to be delivered uh, for election day. And the Department of Transportation installed the street sign by Sandy Spring Volunteer Fire Department so you know where to turn. Uh, public testing besides the video stream of the public test. Um, we also need to, uh, I sent to you a copy of the board needs to sign off on verification of one early voting site as well as one vote center. And so you would be asked, and I need for the board to adopt this, that you would verify that within the green bag, the magnifying, the as items as delineated in green bag, orange bag, blue bag, red bag, and then to verify that all the precinct ballots are accounted for. So that one, I do need a motion from the board to adopt the verification plan. When, when is that? When, when, when do you? October 19th, same day as the public test. So do we have a motion to adopt the uh, verification plan that Margaret just uh, told us? I move. I move. Uh, Nahid moved. Diane, you second? Diane second? Yes, second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? We can do this oral. All those in favor say aye. 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 No one opposed? Okay. All right, Margaret. That's okay. And for the most part, that's it. What about this, the sample ballot? Oh, the sample ballot, um, it went to the printer. And um, let's see, this official sample ballot, I believe you all saw it in a, uh, these preview copies. I'm going to let Allison address this. She was the primary person. She you know, I mean, talked about takes a village. Go, Allison. Oh, uh, I, I think. I think uh, uh, you all have the artwork. I sent around the final version, um, which was the it was a conventional district version that I sent to you all. Um, Alberto is currently working to get a generic version that references all three congressional um, contests on that page that we're going to get up onto the website um, so that it can be available to be seen that way as well. The uh, first group was going to start arriving at the post office today. For the most part, uh, they're going to be dropping at the Shady Grove post office on Wednesday, and so voters should begin seeing them on their doorsteps later this week. Um, it did go to everyone. They went to people who requested a ballot, as well as those who did not. So the messaging is... Um, encompassing and trying to reach voters who already requested their ballot and emphasize that they should not leave that ballot at home and go to a polling place and get stuck voting a provisional ballot, but that they should bring that ballot to a drop box. Allison, I, 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 I'm okay. sorry, I missed this. Um, what did you say about the three congressional districts? I'm sorry, Hilberto's, what was that? I'm the sorry. version that I emailed to all of you was the congressional district eight version. Oh, I see. We are doing a generic version that references all three contests yeah, so for the website, so that uh, when you go to our website, you know, you see one one version that's, that's for everybody. 
Thank you. Good work. Thank you. Alan, did you have a question? Alan? Yes, I did. Uh, about the ballot boxes, uh, with reference to the, the ballot boxes that we do world riding with at Asbury, what kind of publicity is being done in those places to advise the residents that they have uh, their own ballot boxes? Each of those three locations are going to, once the uh, drop box is installed, will advertise amongst their community that the drop box is located at the designated area um, and to notify the, you know, their public or their residents, their employees, and uh, any visitor that wants to drop something in there. So the facility themselves will notify the residents? Yes. Okay. So uh, did the facilities ask us not to um, publicize it because if you uh, don't see their publicity, I mean, we have lists of drop boxes in many places that do not include them, including in the ballot insert and on our website. Well, here's the thing the, all three campuses are closed to the public, so I could not advertise them that they're uh, available without causing the public to go onto these closed campuses. So the agreement. Why couldn't it be advertised as, as being limited? No. Why? No. No, because it's because these campuses are closed. I because I'm not taking well, I, on I, I the responsibility. I understand the campuses are closed. I have relatives who live in the major world. My question is, why can't we advertise the fact that we are going to have a drop box there while that will be open to residents? And Leisure World has agreed that they are going to advertise that to their Leisure World residents that they have a drop box installed at that site, as well as Asbury and Riderwood. All, three of, these on our all three of these sites have made it clear they will not allow the public to come onto the campus unless they have a reason to be on the yes. campus. So why would we encourage the public to go to these locations that are closed to the public. Because the, pu because the public includes those three places. There are people in all of those places who look at our website. And, and there's definitely going to be people in those places. I mean, I realize it's too late for the ballot insert. But there are people in all three of those places that are going to go to the website to find out where to deposit their ballot. And they're not going to have a clue as to, you know, um, as, as to where to find the drop box. We could even on our website say that it's open only to residents and you know consult management for details, although I think that's kind of hiding the ball. Why can't we just say limited to residents? I, I, you know, quite honestly, I have been told... Because inevitably, inevitably, David, somebody from the outside is going to argue about wanting to get in. Um, and these places just are very, very closed. As if you have relatives there, I'm sure you're. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm. I'm. I'm and so I think totally that with. the problem, the, the problem really is the inverse. They will all be notified uh, multiple times by their own communication system. But if it any <coughs> some some public will try to get into one of them at least, and if. It is a simpler matter and isn't causing any problems not to have it publicly um, announced. You are, you are making an assumption that the um, publicity in these three places is going to be 100% effective and that we're not going to confuse people by not having it listed in our official publicity. In a year in which people are going to get information about voting from lots of different places that are not official and are not going to know what to believe and what not to believe, having it on our official website where most people go for, you know, what they hope is the last word on, on the, the election in Montgomery County, Maryland, um, to me is much less of a risk than if we are relying on other people outside of uh, Montgomery County government to be um, doing the publicity. Who said that? Oh, once again, my love, we disagree. Well, I guess we did. Hmm? 
with well, him. Let's get clarification. Now, now he looks like she's trying to say something. Now he, uh, who, Diane, who was saying? Now he, unmute. Oh. Unmute. Yeah, now he just still muted. Now he? Unmute. <laughs> Naheed, okay. we can't hear you. Nope, nope. Okay. That's okay. Trump now did it because I didn't touch anything. Alright, anyhow, can you can you hear me, Margaret? Yes. Yes, I can. People are asking me, how far is the Gatesburg one or one education boulevard to board power center for drop boxes? How far are they to get? You know, you have put in drop boxes in Those all are the drop boxes in one or one that Gatesburg High School, whatever you call them, one or one education boulevard. Are they, are they're, they're, very close close. they're very close. They're very close. There are, you know, I, there are, I don't know, a quarter of a mile apart. I don't yeah, exactly. know exactly where, I don't know exactly, uh, I don't know exactly where uh, the high school is going to place uh, the, cam uh, the camera. Let me rephrase that. I'm not sure where exactly on the Gaithersburg High School campus where that is going to be placed, but the um, Gaithers uh, Activity Center Board Park location, uh, we had to move to behind the building um, as part of the agreement. I understand that. I'm, that you have two places quarter miles apart Dropboxes and people are complaining they live along 28 dark side and western parts of Montgomery County. They don't have a drop box. Nothing. So how do you how do you justify that? Well, you justified it by no. saying that you were going to have all of the early voting sites and all the high schools to have drop boxes. So. That's how it ended up the way it is. It's just like we have at the Rockville Corps. There's a drop box at the EOB. There's a drop box at City Hall of Rockville. And there's a drop box at uh, Richard Montgomery High School. And, I mean, they're all and within a mile that. of one another. It's three-tenths of a mile. To I know that. I'm saying you do not have any high school or elementary, any school in that area in western part that they can get a drop box? Well, the drop box, no, is, is there's a drop box that's going they in have one at they have one in Pools, and Poolsville they have one. at the very beginning. Right. Poolsville is not. Right. Poolsville is, no, Dawson is the left on the, the west side of Right, they have, one at, they have one at Northwest High School. Where is it? I'm not sure. I believe that that's Dawn's town, but I'm not certain. Yes, mm -hmm. So, anyhow. They have one at the at the basic center. Basic center is in Chapter Road. 28 and Dawn's town is Seneca Road. Oh, Seneca Street. Right. They have one. They have one at Quince Orchard High School. Quince Orchard is the lower part. I'm very familiar with that area, David. Okay. I can even... Well, it is based on the messaging that we decided that was going to be at the community recreation centers and the public high schools so that it was a simple message to get out to the public. So that's why you have most of your vote centers as well as early voting sites either at recreation sites or public high schools so if there's not a public high school there there wouldn't be a drop box and yes i mean the the whole thing with gaithersburg yeah that's unfortunate but i also think it's unfortunate that we have Three, three tenths of a mile, the EOB and City Hall, Rockville, but that's just the way it's going to have to be for this election. We had two weeks to make up our mind where this, all of this stuff was going to go. As you recall, we in July we were told we were going to 
open up all the polling places. We came back to you, and we thought we were going to consolidate, and then we ended up with vote centers. So the staff is working as quickly as we can to develop the plans we can with a message that's easy to get out for most individuals to understand where they can find a drop box. And of course we added Friendship Heights, which was, you know, not a high school. Okay. And of course there is the U.S. Postal Service. I mean, I, as an agency that's mailing out tens of thousands of letters daily, there is the U.S. Postal Service that they could possibly use. Okay, we're, we're, I think we're ready to move on to new business. Is there any new business? No, any new business? I, I had a question. Yes? Uh, Jim, this is Elise. Yes. Uh, I yeah, I had a question. When, when we were looking at, in, you know, in our prior iteration at polling places and all of that got changed, um, we did, you, uh, Margaret was kind enough to prepare sort of a spreadsheet of the allocation of scanners and um, electronic poll books at, at each of the locations. Is there going to be something uh, like that available for us to see with respect to uh, the vote centers, you know, the number of judges, the number of scanners, the number of electronic poll books? Um, where the, you know, drop boxes are located and things like that so that we know, you know, how, how they're going to be equipped? Uh, generally, oh. we do not put out that information. Uh, we certainly, uh, you know, we, I can tell you, historically what we have provided is the number of election judges at each site uh, and um, I certainly don't have a problem with providing that to you. Uh, normally we do it that at the October meeting, uh, partly because you have to make a motion to appoint all these election judges. Um, as for the equipment, um, I'm not really sure that that would be, you know, there's some security elements of that that I would like to discuss further with the state board. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm quite willing to discuss that matter with the state board to see if they, if they have any problem whatsoever with sharing that information. But I will tell you, we are sending out a, quite a bit of equipment. Yep. Alan, I think, had the question. Yes. David? I'm sorry. I'd like to follow up on on, on um, Elisa's question. Um, first of all, I, I think that that information um, would be there's a good chance that we'll be asked for something like it by the county council members um, who are going to want to make sure that all parts of the county are being treated fairly. Um, and I know that we make every effort to treat all parts of the county fairly, but they may very well have questions about it. So I think it would be useful for us to get that information um, if we can, you know, before that um, before that happens. Uh, then I have a, a, a question that I, um, I asked last week and was told to wait until today, um, and that is that um, our list of polling places, when the board um, met to discuss polling places as we are required to do under state law, um, we um, approved polling places at, um, I believe, 11 early voting centers, 25 high schools, and I believe three other locations, which were the conference center in North Bethesda, the basic center in North Potomac, and the White Oak uh, Community Center. Um, the list that is on our website lists two different locations at the Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. Um, one in the gymnasium and one in the cafeteria. Um, and I wanted to get a sense as to if there's something special about that particular site, how it compares to other sites, and whether we are going to be in, you know, more than, you know, are we going to be in gymnasiums in general? Because I thought that was kind of the idea behind the high schools, was to use the largest rooms that are available. 
um, and um, and more specifically, are we going to be in more than one room anywhere other than at the Fed the Chevy Chase High School? Yes. Um, it's, with regards to um, the Bethesda Chevy Chase High School and that general area, if you looked at the map that we provided as part of the what went out, I think, Friday, uh, one of the real concerns that the staff had is that Lawton, uh, while it does have a nice sized gym, has very poor parking. We only have 70 parking spaces there. Whereas at this Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, we have something like uh, 200 and, I'm sorry, 300 parking spaces. So um, if, it, you know, this is like a different type of scenario in terms of how to gauge this. So in some places like Blair High School, that we are able to, they have two gyms side by side. So we can open up those, we have two gyms side by side. That's not an opportunity at Bethesda Chevy Chase. So in order to mitigate, because uh, for the fact that Bethesda Chevy Chase has the parking, Lawton doesn't have the parking, we use the cafeteria as well as BCC uh, gym. Then we have, like Germantown, originally we were only going to use the uh, one gym. We discovered that we could use the adjoining gym, so we opened it up so that we, because we know we're going to have a lot of people there. At Praiser. Is that in the rec center you're talking about? Germantown rec center. At um, Blair, there's a couple of high schools. Um, let me look here. Um, that we have. Can we, get a, a, can we get a list of all of those? Um, because, um, I mean, essentially, um, and I guess one of my questions is why this decision was made without the board. Um, because um, we are responsible for setting the polling places. Um, and um, like you said, there is the Lawton Center that is very um, close by to there. And there are a lot of high schools in Montgomery County, not all of them. Um, would uh, well, almost all of them would have a significant amount of parking, which I assume is one of the reasons why the state was so focused on using high schools. But not all of them would necessarily have uh, more than one polling place, and and certainly I understand not all of them are going to have adjoining rooms. But um, I imagine that there might be um, additional places that would benefit, um, and maybe this, and the reason why this is related to. Um, to Elisa's question is that, um, you know, one of the questions is kind of how we do the, um, you know, uh, the number of uh, other resources. Because if you have a really large room um, at Blair and it has as, as many resources as two rooms at BCC, um, that may be a partial explanation. Um, but um, otherwise, I can see very easily that everyone will be saying, why do they get two and we get one? Well, as I just explained, Lawton does not have any parking, and BCC does. Um, I'll be happy to uh, send has, you. Lawton has some parking. It has free parking on the street around it. Well, you assume um, that there's going to be street parking. Well, yes, yeah, they have in the past. For several elections now, and we yes, certainly can go talk to them again. Yes, but that was before the pandemic. That proves to be a problem. Okay, David. Uh, w yes, we can give you the square footage. I'm also going to tell you right now that because of you know we we're seeing this whole you know we're seeing the evolution of the dynamics of how people are going to vote. We've decided to take over the entire Praisner Community Center. <coughs> So that not only are we going to have voting in the social hall and the adjacent room to the social hall for provisional, we're also going to have voting occurring in the gymnasium. And that's, that's because we cannot determine with any certainty that even though we have Paint Branch High School, which is a double gym, and will have more than enough parking space, we don't know if we can change the behavior of the voters 
to go to Paint Branch instead of Praisner. So, and I, the other thing is, is that from Einstein High to Paint Branch High School, I think is about eight miles or so. <coughs> you know, and we have like four high schools or five high schools, and we have thousands of parking spaces, whereas that Bethesda Chevy Chase Friendship Heights <coughs> lot and area, we got just what's there. I mean, we, we're trying to anticipate that if there are individuals that choose to vote in person, on election day, how can we accommodate the most number of individuals? So, and I mean, we also have this criteria of social distancing, as well as we're supposedly not going to let voters stand in line for 30 minutes. So, we have to try to open up as many rooms as possible, and with the amount of equipment we have. So. Um, as for Bethesda Chevy Chase, we picked the high school. If it had had a double gym, we would have opened up a double gym. Well, uh, I guess it would be helpful to us to get a sense as to um, other kinds of changes you've made, like the one you just announced for Prisoner, which I think is very helpful. I know that in the past we've been told that the gymnasium was a problem because of the elevator um, at Prisoner not being um, and, the right size. And the reason we're opening up the gym is that we're going to confine the ballot marking device on the upper level, which is ADA accessible, and then only those individuals that can will be able to well, there will be two things number one uh, they can go down the steps to go into the gym and pick up their ballot and vote and then scan it but if they're handicap accessible and they insist upon voting a paper uh, uh, optical scan ballot then we're going to have to make arrangements for them to go around the side of the building get that door open and let them in that's that has been the significant issue plus the whole issue of the signal for the poll books, which is not, you can't get a signal in the gym, so it has to be in the social hall. And these types of logistical things are things that, you know, we're trying to address as we see the voter participation levels at the, you know, by mail and uh, trying to make decisions on how to best facilitate voting in person for those individuals that have made that decision to vote in person. No, and that sounds like you've done some great things. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that there's a good chance that you and Jim and I may very well get questions about some of these decisions at the council, so it would be helpful to know about any other examples where we are expanding our reach from what we've done before in order to accommodate social distancing so that it doesn't look like it does on our website where it's but that's the Chevy Chase. But David, so, I mean, respectfully, you're not, I mean, just think about it. We are going from 255 precincts at 228 locations to 40 locations on Election Day. We have to think differently. I mean, we're constantly understood. looking at different sets of numbers and cohorts to be able to make a decision that is going to enable people to vote in person or by mail or whatever way they choose with the, the greatest ease. There's no, and nobody has the textbook to do it. I mean, if this had been with Washington State, everybody votes by mail, this would be a cakewalk. But this is a well, whole Margaret, world. I, I, I very much understand that you are, you are in uncharted territory and have done amazing things with it. What I'm asking for is to be, for the board to be kept informed, we get a lot of questions from a lot of people on all kinds of things, things on our website, things not on our website, et cetera. And if you are expanding our reach in these places, like I, I had not heard about the prisoner center in school just now, um, that is you know, help us to help you spread the word. Um, you know, or if the word is, is that we want to encourage people to use high schools because we're concerned that they're going to overload our traditional early voting centers because of habit, 
that's something else that you know that that, that we can help with because uh, you're right there's a lot of uh, high schools in Silver Spring that might have much shorter lines than you know if everybody goes to the printer center even as you've expanded it because if everybody David. goes to the same place you, you know there's only so much you can do um, but um, David, to, to, to the you, greatest extent that we can share that information I think the better off we are David to you and to all of the board members I think, you know, the efforts that we're trying to make in terms of getting MoCo votes and, and uh, you know what, I forgot to make the best news announcement. We got two awards, two national awards actually, from the National Association of County Officials. One was for our 777 text message, 77788 text message. That was actually went to the Department of Technology Services, but it was our idea and I I tip my hat to Herberto for his pers persistence. That's yeah, great. And then the other award was Allison, help me out here. Oh, the, the multi app. Was it the app? There was. It was the app. But what was the other award for? Oh, Allison. What was it? It was the multicultural outreach. It was a, a general award for the the size and of the outreach that the director does. Yeah, so, yeah, and, uh, but with regards to your original statement, the most important thing that we can do is to make sure that when people are going to vote, whether it's early voting, which is my first choice, go to early voting site, or they choose to vote election day, that they should use one of those applications, the texting or MoCA votes, to find out, you know, based on their zip code, what's the shortest wait time and go there to vote in person. And Great. the other thing is, the other rumor that people are supposedly circulating is if I request a vote by mail, can I bring it to the polling place? No. Well, you can bring it to the polling place, but you're going to be a provisional voter. You're going to stand in line for a long time. You're going to get to have to fill out an application and that it's smarter to just, if you don't feel confident about your vote counting, drive your ballot up here. Our doors are open from 8.30 to 5. We have a ballot box right at the front of the counter. They can drop their ballot in our office. We have that drop box outside of our office. Well, M Margaret, there's going to be a drop box in front Margaret, of the voting people, place. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of people are going to be more than happy instead of, if they take their ballot to the polls and it's already filled out, they can drop it in the drop box. If they bring the um, envelope. That's what happened at Silver yeah. Spring. They brought the ballot, but not the envelope. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's definitely the word to get out. I think you're exactly right about people checking the wait time before they go places. Could you please uh, send us again kind of the, the where people can check the wait time so that we can spread the word to people because i think that is what's going to keep people I will, from, from I, will, the line. I think I, that's I, I, I think that's great as i stated in, um, the, in the meeting i will after because they have to flip from polling places to vote center so they're working on the programming to do that right now and as soon as it's live I'm sure Heberto will be swinging from the video towers and whatever sound waves there are out there, pushing out that message. But we'll send okay. it out to you um, too. I, I, and it will also question. be on if our website. If somebody applies for a mail-in ballot today, about how long should they um, think it will take to get it? Uh, we're five days behind. How many days are we behind? On the, on the written. Huh? All the words mail. Mail. Uh, we're mail, we're 12 days behind. Mail, we're 12 days behind. If we're using Oliver's, we're one day, two days Oliver's behind. There's no delay. Let's put it Oliver's are one day behind. The written ones are, the written applications are and, problematic. And when you say behind, the regular would be about a week. Is that what the regular would be? So 12 days behind means 12 days behind a week and one day behind. I mean, what's, what's the regular? Regular, okay, there's the online request to vote by mail. You fill that out right. and we're one day behind right. on that. And then if you filled out a vote by mail application, we are 12 days behind. 
Is that right? Okay, but when you say behind, if I do it online, I could expect it approximately when? Uh, well, the next poll will not be until September 28th. So that would okay. be so September 28th plus 5. Okay, so basically it's about five days after whenever the poll is. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you. Okay, and that's in the packet. Okay. 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 Barbara, I, I think Alan has a question. Alan? Barbara, it's Jackie, I have hate to ask you this, but could Alan we have a list patient. of the dates that you said the board had to be available or there would be things for the yeah. board to do? Uh, I'll, for yeah, I'll send it to you, Jackie. Exactly, yeah, okay. Alan, did you have something? Thank Al you. Alan? I have a question. Uh, it's a website question. Um, the, the Q and A on the website does tell voters you can you don't have to vote at your high school. You can vote anywhere. You can vote at any of the early voting centers and so on. Uh, can we put that that place higher up when when people are looking at the very top of the page for the important things to tell people you, you can vote anywhere. You, you don't go to regular high school. Get your regular polling place. We tell you all the places that we just here. So any place you go to is fun. We get that in there, please. I will make a note of it to talk to the webmaster. Okay. Uh, also on on the website, uh, I tried with an old minute meeting from last year. That there's a broken link for July 2019, and then. The, the minutes for September, October, November are not on there yet. So maybe some time when uh, things slow down a little bit, Lisa, you can put those up there. Can you repeat that? What minutes are missing? Uh, there's a broken link for July, uh -huh. and then there's a, then a, this September, October, November 2019, those minutes are not on the website. Did you say November 19? Uh, September, October, and November. Did you? When was the last time you checked the website, Alan? Uh, today. Today? Okay, because I know Janet, Janet said that they were updating the site. Janet said that they were updating. Janet said they were updating the website, and so they're making changes. So there's all those minutes aren't the links broken right now. They're aware they're updating the website. Great. Okay, so is there any new business? I think that website question is, is uh, no. no. Can we get this? The only one that we're going to get is I need to complete all these minutes. How many people voted live? How many voted um, by mail? How many people did, you know, did uh, drop boxes? Could we have that on the website? I'm sorry? Can you repeat that, Alan? The 2020 primary results. We provided that to you. We didn't put that on the board on the website. I mean, the state board has on their website the number of, of requests that there have been, and then when the ballots start being opened, they will say how many ballots have been processed. If that's what you're referring to. If people are asking, like, how many, how many people? Voted by, by mail, how many people voted in person, how many dropped in the boxes, if they're balanced in the boxes. Well, right now, all that would be, uh, you know, there's no drop boxes except, I mean, at some point, the state board will have that information on their website, as they did before in the primary. We have results for every other election on our website. Is there a reason why the 2020 primary would not also be included? I believe it was, it's, it was in, on the banner for a long time. Yeah, it was. Right, uh, but right now it's not available at all. Well, it isn't today because they're trying to update our website. So I will, Janet is here. She knows that they're working on it. And I will make note that the primary election results are missing. She said. 
The yeah. links are broken for the minutes. The 2020 one primary one is not thing. up on the website. Sorry, go ahead. It was on the carousel. 2020 primary election results? It's on the carousel, right on the top. If you click on it, it takes you right to the state. That's the only results we have. Alan, did you hear that? Jenna, can you repeat that? Do it. The election results Get it. 2020 are on the carousel, the slider at the top of our website. You just click on um, the I don't believe they are today. Let's see. Vote by mail, drop boxes, board meeting, register to vote, and early voting. I don't believe that they're on, they, they were up there. I don't think, I don't believe they're there now. I just went to it right now. Okay, let them get, let them fix it. That would be great. Jim, a question for you, Jim. Yes. Jim? Wait, I, it went um, down today, but they we're fixing they, it? They must have took it down today. It was up there Saturday, because okay. I saw it. No. I'll tell them to put it back up. Okay. Janet's going to get that back up. Um, excellent. Thank you, Janet. Uh, Jim, you and I um, both asked in uh, for the primary election for um, a button on the top of the website, kind of like what is there now for... Um, I believe now we have it for register to vote, vote by mail, update your registration information. You may recall that we had asked for one that says, where's my ballot? Um, and we had asked for the where's my ballot because that's the number one question that all of us get. It, it's where, you know, where, where's my ballot? And I realized that what we could be doing is directing people to the state website where they can find out if their ballot request has been received. What we could be doing is directing them to the application so that if they don't have a ballot, they know they have to apply for it. Or what we could be doing is just giving them an explanation of if you requested your ballot, here's how long it's likely to take. But in any event, I was wondering if we could restore something like that because I think that there's going to be a lot of voters who are going to go to that website wanting to know how long will it take for my ballot to arrive. And I realize we don't know exactly, but we probably have at least a, a range that we can give people, and that would also hopefully lighten up on some of the phone calls that I'm sure that the board staff is getting from people who are asking, where's my ballot? Janet? We did have where's my ballot up for the primary. We took it down for the beginning of this election because it was just applications. When the ballots start going out, where's my ballot goes back up. Excellent. Thank you. Can be no no further business. Yes. The minutes. No, the yeah, we're gonna go to that. Yes. Nahi. Lisa. Yes. Yeah, Lisa. Okay, read the, the minute which we have to approve the date. May eighteenth, twenty twenty. Well, wait. We we just we we passed over action items. Lisa. I'm sorry, I was addressing oh. Kate. I don't know. The action item that I'm aware of is uh, a report. Nahid right. mm -hmm. is saying something. Well, she wants to get right to the minutes. So we get all Department of Health meeting. As far as the action items, I believe that um, Elise had a request for information that should be on the action item. Also, Kevin, Kevin's going to write up, Kevin's going to write up the uh, the rule that Senator Kagan suggested. Yes, I had that. Okay. And and, and um, there was Elisa's request. Yes. And yes, about uh, the uh, email or whatever the correspondence was with Marianne Keith. Right. But then also some indication about the allocation of equipment. Correct. At the uh, polling, at the vote centers, of the election judges, the gymnasiums and cafeterias and things like that. I mean, I think this is really critically important because we must keep in mind the perception that certain parts of the county are better served than other parts of the county. And we don't want that perception to persist. And, and, and along with that, 
And along with that, I had asked Margaret for, to the extent that, that you have a, a, a list of other places where you have greatly expanded um, our use of the building, like you announced for Prasner, um so that we can um, explain to people, because that's a, a perfect example of something that deals with the perception that Elise just described, uh, that you already had thought about and had already addressed, but that we didn't know about, and we'd like to spread the words. So if we can get a list of other examples like that, that would be very helpful. Okay. 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 Now we have, we have uh, one set of minutes. Correct, Lisa? That is correct. And that's the May 18, 2020. Right. I'm sorry, Nahid, did you want to say something? Right. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the May 18 as amendment by David or whoever did it. Um, I May 18. The May, May 18th. That the, 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 version we're yes. the version we're talking about is the one I sent at uh, 7.56 last night after speaking with Nahid. Right. Is there a second? I second. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 No one opposed? Those minutes are accepted. Yay. That's all we have for today. That today, right? Okay, so our next board meeting is October 19th. However, we will have to meet after Margaret's uh, meeting to discuss what we discussed today about the in-person in uh, access and the scan and the uh, in-person access to the uh, scanning part canvas. of it too. Correct. The canvas, the public canvas. Correct. And uh, the exposure of public to a safety hazard in the hallway of the Board of Elections warehouse. We'll have that discussion after your meeting. Yes. Okay. All right, I think that's it. Uh, do we have a motion to oh, adjourn? We have moved to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? We're adjourning the meeting. Aye. Aye. All right. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 No one opposed? Okay, everybody, be safe. We'll be in touch soon for our interim meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all.